Welcome all to the light and love of Unity of Lawrence. In unity, we begin everything with prayer. So let's take a centering breath and open to the divine in all of us as we listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to peace on earth. We appreciate each individual's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us. In unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as creators. We come from love, as love, to be love. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. If there is anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see our prayer chaplain for today, Karen Langsford, after the service up here at the front of the sanctuary. Thank you, Karen. Well, not only do we love prayer and centering breath, but expressing joy through song. So let's rise as we want and join Holly in singing amazing things. Each new day brings And with every breath you take Bless the progress that you make Reason in your name Start in every gift you give Love your life, love your dreams You will do amazing things Here we go
go and the people you will go where we went or where or how you don't have to know right now we're on the right track no need to look ahead or back just enjoy what this day brings you will do Amazing beings, just being. As we breathe into the knowing of that truth, let's affirm together unity's founding principles. There is only one presence and one power in my life and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now our vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And our mission statement, we are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. And so we look forward to hearing from our musical guest today, Kristen Hamilton. Please give her a warm welcome. Uh, good morning. <laughs> my name is Kristen Hamilton, and I'm. This brought my daughter. This is Lucy Gray Hamilton. We are. Thank you. We are delighted and honored to be here uh, to share this beautiful morning with you and, and to share some music with you. Um, we do have um, an album out the, in, the, in the foyer there if you're interested in taking a look at that. This is a song off of that. It's called Hope.
Well, I'm just a leaky mess of hope now. <laughs> Powerful, power-filled hope. Thank you. Whew. All right. As Edwin Gaines is, would say, girl, you blew my dress up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's not all. We've got more as we center on transformation and hope. Phil relocated to Lawrence from Mexico to be closer to his daughter and granddaughter. He, he was invited to create an art program for gifted and talented youngsters in Garland, Texas, a suburb of Dallas, and taught 29 years overall. He began to study, practice, and teach integral yoga in 1969, and more recently was a senior Dharma instructor of Tibetan Buddhism, which he continued in Mexico. He enjoys creating visual art, especially mandalas, playing guitar, writing poetry, tai chi, and watching clouds move across the sky. Welcome, Phil. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Hello, is this, oh, it's working, okay, good. Uh, what a segue, clouds across the sky. Imagine it's raining day after day, it's gray, it's dark, so forth. You've just watched the last episode of your favorite series on Netflix and found out that the next season will be four years from now. <laughs> <laughs> and you step outside and the clouds part just a little bit and a stream of light comes down, and then you look around, and there's a rainbow. Special, amazing, beautiful experience. That's kind of my view of how we, we think of grace. It's a special occasion, but I th don't really subscribe to the ordinary view of much. So, uh, I thought I would, I'm just going to share some of my insights and so forth. Um, so um, I had been doing some study on, on grace in general, and uh, it just, you know, the little voice said, amazing grace. I had already been thinking about what I was going to do today. And I said, yeah, let's work with that. So I thought, um, we'll start with that because, uh, you know, it's an interesting story. Here's this... Uh, this English uh, sailor becomes a captain of a slave ship, and uh, uh, there's a storm. And so I imagine, you know, like those scenes on Star Trek where they're, they're you know, everybody's, you know, this, this rough sea. And uh, <clears throat> so anyhow, it, it looks like the ship's going, and, you know, the captain goes down with the ship. So this is a pretty grim situation for John Newton is his name. Um, so, uh, I can picture him, you know, going, you know, facing his, his death and saying, now it's time to call on God, you know, God, God help me, save me. Uh, even some negotiation, like, well, if you'll save me, I'll do this and that. And sure enough, he went on eventually to become an Anglican priest. Uh, so, uh, in 1779, he wrote Amazing Grace, along with a another collection of hymns that were put in a book and published and so forth. So that's, you know, the rest is history. So I want to look at really just kind of the first line. So uh, amazing a grace, how sweet the sound. Now, what does sweet mean? Well, it's, it's not like sugar. 
<laughs> I think. It's more like when we have someone we really love and we call them sweetheart or someone calls us that or sweetie or something like that. It's a term of endearment. And so that sound that's so sweet is really the voice of God calling us back into itself. I was thinking this morning, you know, God's kind of like E.T., you know, phone home. <laughs> come back home. Come back, come back, come back. So there's this magnetic force that exists in the universe that's calling us back into the awareness of the truth of who and what we are. That's my view of that sweet sound that saved a wretch like me. Now, I'm not a big fan of going around thinking of myself as a wretch, <laughs> but I have been involved in some pretty wretched situations. Uh, <laughs> I won't go, I'll save those stories for another day. Uh, but we all have. And really, I, I had to look the word up because it's not, a, not used much anymore. But it just basically means disturbance of the mind and body. Uh, it's, it's, it's an agitated state. And you know, the Buddha said that the first noble truth, the first thing he said is that suffering is all pervasive. And the original word is, is uh, uh, dissatisfaction, disturbance. We are disturbed because we are separate. I was blind, but now I see. So we live in this sort of conceptually formed ego state where we are really this, this very moment, we are the end result of all of our past experiences, everything we've learned, everything we've been taught, all of our wounds, all of our joys and sorrows have shaped us in this moment. And we have not made too many clear, open-eyed decisions about who and what we want to be. When we get a little older, we start doing that. But we should have started that much sooner in our lives, or I should have. I, uh, <clears throat> I can't speak for anyone but myself, but anyhow. So this sense of separation is really what's broken. So he was blind. He thought he was separate. He thought he was what he had become due to circumstances, causes, and conditions in his life. And he said, I want something different. He had an awakening. So this separation then is really our root issue, our root problem, because we are one. You know, our, our first unity principle is God is all. God is good. God is it. There's nothing else. Now, if we think of God as sort of the cosmic puppeteer, you know, up there pulling it, no, it doesn't work. But if we think of it as ineffable, that, that's a great word. I love it. It just means unexplainable. It can't be put into words. It is too vast. So this love that's being expressed as grace is like if you take if you take the most intense, deepest love you have ever experienced in your life, and you can add them all together if you want, whatever. Okay, take that feeling and multiply it by a godzillion. <laughs> I don't know if I invented that number, but it just came to me. A godzillion is written as the infinity symbol. Even if infinity were a thing, we could never know it because it's constantly expanding. It doesn't hold still. We cannot know God with our intellect. And we can, we can, we can form images that help us at work. But to really know it is a different situation. So that takes us to uh, this, you know, grace as we understand it. You know, ordinary grace, it's, uh, I think, for me, it's pretty much synonymous with blessing. 
that a miracle is a kind of a, a, or an intervention or some sort of protection. I've had all of those experiences. I wish I could tell you those stories. Some of them are pretty dramatic, um, but I won't. Uh, so uh, this idea then of ordinary grace, we're pretty familiar with that. And like I stated at the beginning, we think of it as kind of a special occasion. But I want to propose that it's not a special occasion, that that which causes it to occur is always present. There's no variation in the presence of our own divine nature. It doesn't fluctuate. It's not brought to us by Midco. You know, it's just consistent. It doesn't vary at all. We do. We remember it, we forget it. We ignore it, we hide from it, we run from it, we embrace it, whatever. That's the variable. But that grace is always, always present. I, I doubt a lot of things. That's part of my path, is to, is to question the validity of practically every idea. I do not doubt the truth of this. This can be experienced uh, directly. So that takes us to the, the idea of deep grace, what I'm calling it today. <laughs> That's when we begin to understand that this is, that we can live in this state. And our third unity principle is co creation. We begin to form a relationship, an openness, a receptivity to that source consciousness that is eager to flow into our being, to inspire us, to guide us, to experience along with us. And some teachings even say that we are that and it's just experiencing itself. Whoa, that's what in Texas we call a poser. <laughs> Uh, so anyhow, uh, so essentially, this deep grace then is a process that it's it's an you know as we unfold as we do our spiritual work, then it is there with us. It's a process of discovery, a process of peeling away the layers of the onion of our our ignorance, which keeps us in the dark. And so the more we peel away, the more light, the more luminosity that we experience. We go deeper and deeper into the light, into the awareness of our own nature, the truth of our own nature. So one of the things that came to me while I was uh, working on this talk is uh, a Bible quote, be still and know that I am God. You've probably heard that, um, Psalm 46, I think. So I took some liberty and decided to rewrite that. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, but what I hear that saying is, if I can be, st or we, if I can be still and silent long enough, with enough focus, I can know my nature. I can know the truth of my own divinity. I can know the reality of God as love. And so this uh, is a very important thing in my view. In fact, I believe that's what a human life is for, is to reconnect, to remember the truth of what has always, always been. It's, you know, this idea of seeking is really kind of silly. <laughs> Have you ever lost something and you look all over the house and all of a sudden it's in your pocket, you know? It's like that. The divine has been in our pocket all along, in our pocket of our heart. So that takes us to... Uh, this process of going within. Now, I've been doing spiritual practices of one form or another, quite a, quite a collection 
It's like a little string of beads, you know. Uh, <clears throat> for over 50 years, I have not yet found any way around either meditation, contemplation, or deep internal prayer. Whatever we want to call that process. I don't claim that there's any one way to do it. We have to find our own way of going within, being silent and still. Now that doesn't mean no sound necessarily. It means letting go of this conditioned jabbermouth mind. Now, so what I want to do today is a little different. I want to have a little bit longer meditation. And I just want to talk you through three steps that I have been sharing on Tuesday evening here in our meditation group. And it's very simple. I mean, you know, this, this is the, the distillation of, of the 108 Vedas and the whatever. <laughs> it's very simple. One, relax. Relax into the present moment. Relax into the sacredness of the present moment. Watch the breath. The breath is life. Life is sacred. We're connected right then to the divine. Just with, in the moment, just take this, stop for a second and think. Breath is life. Life is sacred. God is now. It's so simple. It really is so simple. So the second step, this is a little more complicated. It requires us to release our reliance upon absolutely everything that we use to define our reality. In that state, I am not a body. I have no description, no gender, no race, no age, no nothing. I'm not an ego personality. I'm not an, e I'm not an intellectual entity. I'm not my history. I'm not my joys and sorrows. Those are experiences I've had. But in truth, that's not what I am. What I am is that divine consciousness expressed as an individual being. That's the truth of what we are, in my view. So we release reliance upon that. We release reliance upon name and form, language-based thinking, all concept. Now, even to the point of time and space. So there's not anything left that we can hang our thinking mind on. Now, the good news is, this is only during the meditation session. <laughs> you're going to need most of that when you're done. Try, you know, yeah, you will. It comes in handy. But you understand that it's not the truth of what we are. It has its place. We need an ego self. We need a personality. That's, that's a part of our experience as a human being. We're, it's not the enemy. The enemy is our selfishness. The self-grasping that we, we cannot let go of the idea of being that little tiny me. So that we have to work on. But the rest of it, it's just there. But so we release the reliance upon it. That's it. We just go, and what's left? What's left is spaciousness. The vast, sometimes it's called emptiness, but that's not a, the best word for it. It's this expansive field of consciousness that is infinite and eternal. The mind of God has no geography. It is everything that exists. There is no not God. And that can be revealed if you look for it. When we start to, you know, when we do the namaste, we're looking for it. The divinity within me acknowledges the divinity within you, even if you are wretched. <laughs> even if you are 
up to here with wretchedness. The center point is that divinity. No exceptions. And it's in the animals. It's in all of nature. And if we're really good at it, we can start seeing it in the floor and the guitar and the, and the trees. I mean, well, trees are easy. The, cha the chairs, the cars, it's, that's a little harder. <laughs> but it's all made of, of molecules. So anyhow, so I want to close. Oh yeah, then the last one is just to remember. We go into that spaciousness and we just remember the truth of our nature. And we're connected to it. The higher self is the divinity. The God that we talk about is not up there or out there. It's here, right here in the thousand petal lotus at the top of our head. But it's really the whole body and the whole energy field around us. And it's more, it, you know, it's ineffable. It's way more than can be described. So it's okay to try, but don't get frustrated if you can't do it because you're not going to, you're not going to win that one. <laughs> It's just beyond our language. So I, I have a little closing statement here. When we enter the ineffable, ineffable, when we enter this ineffable luminosity, this loving divine presence, we become a living embodiment of grace, a radiant light in the world. So that's pretty much our fifth principle in unity. So really, really and truly, you know, grace is amazing. So I'm going to stop and we're going to have another beautiful piece of music and then we'll have a, a meditation.
simply relax deeper into your seat, into this moment, this sacred now, which is the only place where life actually is real. Focus the mind on the breath. Just let the breath flow in and out naturally. Acknowledge the life force that comes into our body with the breath. Prana, the chi, whatever we want to call it, it comes in and keeps us alive. It is sacred. This moment is sacred. Every moment is sacred. Feel that sanctity of the now. Now we breathe from the diaphragm. We're right in the heart center. Feel that your breath is connected to the heart center. That we connect to the love, the ineffable love that calls us, that fills us and guides us, inspires us, that loves us beyond our understanding without being worthy. It simply is its nature. Feel that in the heart and for the world. Now let the awareness rise near the throat area. And we release our reliance upon all the content of the mind, all the conditioning, all the learned aspects of our existence. Simply set it aside. We're just taking a break from our ordinary th mind. And let it go. Set it aside. Turn the awareness inward, deep, deep into the center of your being. Feel the silent stillness, the serenity, the inner peace, the love and the joy. Energetically, just feel it like sunlight. glowing in the depths of your being. Very gently, just feel that this silence is the clear expression of the divine that we are and the divine that is our source, not two. We are one with that. We are that. Open and be receptive. Allow it to flow. 
surrender control embrace this presence Now, allow this amazing grace to flow back into the body, back into the heart, connect again with the divine frequency of unconditional love. Feel the sensation of this love flowing out of the heart into the world. Allow it to be what it is, to do what it does. Let it flow through you. Direct this loving energy into your own body. The level of the atoms, the molecules, the chemicals and hormones, the cells, the tissues, the organs, the organ systems, Feel that the whole body is anointed and blessed by its own divinity. Identify this feeling, this sensation.
now. Very gently bring the awareness back to the senses in the head. Take a deep breath and reconnect with the thinking mind. You can move the body. And when you're ready, you can slowly open the eyes. Conclude with a feeling of gratitude for life and all that it contains, the joys and the sorrows, all expressions of this amazing grace. take a deep joyful breath um, we're about to pick up the energy level here <laughs> the song about love well daddy said love is a feeling daddy said love is a law daddy said love is God and lives within us so love is within us all talk about love lives within us all so a choice you must choose each day and that ain't always easy but you choose love anyway you choose love anyway but I'm talking about love Show you know the more love you'll know. Talking about love, lives within us all. Oh, so kind of love, lives within us all. Well, God said love is free to give and receive. Receive your love with care, and the more you'll have to share. The more you'll have to share. Love is loud, we say love is God, and lives within us. Love is within us all. That's all. Thank you all so much for inviting us here today. Thank you. Well, please come back again and again and again. Okay. <laughs> Well, as we breathe into the well of grace and our ushers come forward for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our open hearts. And let's affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. 
And as the love offering is collected, let's join Holly in singing Living in the Heart of God. And as our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks as we listen. We are grateful, and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. So as we are in that flow, a special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us in the room and online, wherever you are. We are grateful you are here with us today in our Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence. We have a packet for those of us who are here in person if you want to pick up information in the foyer. and. As you head out the doors, turn left. Today is Second Sunday Potluck. So join us downstairs for our Second Sunday monthly potluck meal. All are welcome. There's plenty for everyone. And you've probably been smelling the yumminess as we are here. Our weekly meditation, as Phil mentioned, meets on Tuesdays at 6.30 in the sanctuary. Everyone is welcome. There's also an online meditation on Tuesday mornings, and there's information in the foyer and on our Unity website. Come early and join us on Sunday mornings for a time of fellowship at 10.30 a.m. downstairs, so you can enjoy some fresh coffee and treats with your Unity community before coming up for the service. And now, Jay Pryor is going to speak with us about the Keys to the Kingdom class. Yay. Hey, everybody. Uh, first of all, Phil, thank you so much for grounding us in that message. Um, so this Thursday, the Keys to the Kingdom course kicks off. And I am really excited and delighted to be teaching this course. And I wanted to, you know, we've been announcing this course and been talking about it since June, actually. And so for some of you, you're like, yes, I'm doing that course. And some of you are like, yes, I want to do that course. And I'm not so sure I'm going to do that course. <laughs> so, um, so I want to speak to those of you who may be on the fence. Um, you know, this course is a rigorous course. And um, we're going to ask a lot of you. We're going to push you probably a little bit further out of your comfort zone than you may. And while it may not sound inviting, what I can promise you is that this course is about creating community, powerful community. And inside that community, we're going to make, we're going to practice some things. And so for the next seven weeks with me, if you come on Thursday, we're going to be practicing a lot of the principles that Phil just talked about. Right, practicing that knowing of ourselves as being who we are, which is the truth and the light, right? Rather than that monkey mind and all those fears. And I know a lot of you in here know Karen Drucker, you're a lot of Unity folks. So 
one of the things that you can do to prepare for Thursday that will ground you in this first principle that I invite you all to join me here in a second um, is this knowing that God or whatever you want to call it. Sometimes I say God, you say love, right? God, love, right? God is our source. Your job is not your source. Your social security check is not your source. Your, you know, your retirement balance in your 401k is not your source. God is your source. And Karen Drucker has a great song that goes, God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. You know this song, God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. And that really, that song helps me sometimes. It's like an anchor to ground me in that world. So we're going to practice that God is my source for seven weeks rigorously, right? We're going to practice giving up that anything is wrong, right? <laughs> Ow! That's a really big one. And it's a muscle that I have a lot of muscle in, right? As a coach, I train and teach people all the time to live in this world where there's nothing wrong. It looks like there's something wrong because I'm scared, right? And God is my source. God is my power. God is everything I need, so there's nothing wrong. And it's sometimes a perception shift, so we're going to practice looking at everything in our lives as though nothing's wrong, and what perspective can we take that takes us out of that wrong because that's the resistance that we want to not have anymore around our abundance? And how do we shift it? And so if you're up for that, which I think is exciting for me, those are the kind of things that just excite me. If you're up for that, I invite you to just come this Thursday. And, you know, this Thursday you can come and, not, and just wait until you register there right? Come and see how it feels, how it vibes. But what I'm up for is creating a whole community of people that are getting that there's nothing wrong and that we are the source and that God is the source of our good. I mean, if all of us vibe into that, like imagine what could be possible, right? And that's what I'm excited about, what I'm up for creating. And I hope that you will consider joining us because we're going to have a blast. So Thursday, 6.30, right here. But Jay, it's summer. I'm on vacation and won't be here for all seven. Can I still come to the ones that I am here for on Thursdays at 6.30? I, I really want to, I, I, I want people to come to at least six. If you can come to at least six sessions, I know it's summer. Um, and part of this is about building community, right? And so if you're gone half the time, you, we, don't, we miss you, right? We miss your vibe. And so this is, we'd love to have you come, and I'm going to ask you to at least 10 six. Does that work? Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. Yay. So Thursdays, 6.30 to 8, right here. Bam, coming to you. All right. Well, a meditation retreat, Embracing the Five Unity Principles will be on this Saturday, July 16th at the Fairchild Wellness Retreat in Overbrook, Kansas. It is a treat to go to a retreat there on Saturday, 16th. The retreat will be from 9.45 a.m. to about 4 p.m. and is open to the first 20 people that sign up. So bring your own lunch. There's a big sign-up sheet and an information sheet in the foyer. We have lots of information in the foyer for you to pursue and peruse before you go down to lunch downstairs. See Phil Roger or Cheryl Miller. If you have questions, they're here. So chat them up at lunch. Save the date. Matt Venuti Immersion Concert is coming on Friday, July 29th at 7 p.m. The suggested donation of $20 you can give at the door. See the poster in the foyer for more information and for the video link to a preview of the Ultima Zone. Please join us next Sunday when Randy Granger joins us via Zoom for special mus music and the message holding on to the thread of 
recreation, reweaving a loving world together. And now it's time to sing in our youth. They're ready and waiting. All right, let's stand up and welcome them in. You are walking in the light, in the light and the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, in the light, in the light and the light. In the light, in the light, in the light of God. Okay, so we did have a lesson planned today, which was forgiveness and friendship, but these two had the cutest friendship I've ever seen, and I have six siblings, so that was basically what we focused on today, was friendship. Um, working together and friendship and forgiveness is what we talked about today. Do you guys think there's anything else? Okay. No? Okay. <laughs> friendship, what else is there? So let's rub our hands together, congregation, and hold them out as we bless our youth saying, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. Congregation, we love you, we bless you, and we be behold the divinity in you. Great job. Awesome, thank you so much. Well, let's sing the peace song together on that. As we lower our hands, let's say together the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God washes over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is swell.